my name is Esan Kolb. I'm Senior Associate of Innovations at Veritas Investments. Tonight I'm here hosting a fireside chat with a founder that we admire a lot, Taylor Ho. I'm the sole founder and chief happiness officer at APM Help, where we are the back office for over a thousand property management companies across America. So at Veritas, we like to get to know people personally. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your life story, sure. um, how you grew up and that, how that led you to where you are today. You know, my dad has been a property manager realtor for the past 30 years and my mom was a CPA. And, you know, like I think back to when I was 10, uh, middle school, I used to go to attics at my dad's investment properties <laughs> and like, we would attics, there's the uh, well, small attics confined in spaces Houston, in the top. Whew. 140 degrees, 100 percent humidity. Oh man. Go up in the attics and replace hot water heaters. Okay. Right? Like that that was that was my summer gig when I was a when I was a kid. And then just like my mom as a side hustle, she was a CPA, so was, I didn't know what it meant at the time, but she was essentially doing like bank racks at the time. You know, like what's weird is today I'm literally the product of both of my parents. Aren't we all? We yeah. try to run from it, but there's no running. <laughs> there's no running from it, Aren't absolutely. We all? Why don't you tell us a little bit about what inspired the inception of APM Help and how did your time at Appfolio influence that decision? One of the VPs at Appfolio at the time was uh, hiring in at AUT and you know, I was like, I wanna I wanna learn. I wanna I wanna go to this company. And so that happened to be Appfolio. Mm -hmm which today is, I would say, probably the gold standard of like this single family, small multifamily space. And how'd that go? Uh, I was only there for seven months. Okay. Learned a ton. Sure. I was entry level customer support, become a product expert. Mm -hmm. Probably was a little too disruptive, wanted to change the world at Apfolio, and ultimately I was let go. I was fired in seven months. Fair to say that you were gainfully fired? I, yeah, fair to say. Yes. <laughs> I, look, I fully understand now that I'm the I'm at the other side of the spectrum. I understand why they let me go. We get it. Being, right? a, but, being a good employee yeah. and being a good founder are mutually exclusive skill sets. Relatively, <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're very, they're different. They're different yeah. skill sets. Different skill sets. Yeah. So for you folks out there, uh, you you employees who are struggling, there there is hope yet. Yeah, no, <laughs> in absolutely. The founder world. And so, what actually inspired you to start the company? So after Appfolio, I had been moonlighting the whole time anyways. I was always into startups, a serial entrepreneur. And so I eventually started my next company, went to buy various startups, went through batch eight in this SF, did like startup hustle. We had like a one bedroom apartment, you know, 12 guys, you know, all this kind of stuff. Fantastic time in my life. I was working for other startups, worked for a friend. A wife ultimately was like, we're pregnant. And as Life a startup is. founder, yeah, yeah, like look, as a startup founder, you typically don't pay yourself. You kind of everything goes back to the startup. Sure. And I was like, I have to really make money now. Yeah. So the lowest hanging fruit for me at the time was consulting at Folio clients. People just remembered me. They looked me up on Facebook, LinkedIn. They were like, Hey, we'll pay you to come clean up our books, help us with that folio. You know, I was like, Screw it. Let me just try it. Let's, uh, let's talk about where you are today. Yeah. How does APM help make property managers' lives a little bit easier? Obviously, that's a bit of a thankless profession to be in. It's a tough sure. job. Yeah. How are you improving their lives? You know, honestly, it starts with accounting. In our mission at APM help, it's, it's to clean up the industry and make it better. If you move into a new apartment, you move into a new lease, whatever it may be, you hand over that first month's rent check and you hand over that security deposit. And anytime you hand over that security deposit, you always, doesn't matter where you are in the world, you always have this bad feeling like, I don't think I'm ever going to see the entire security deposit back. Mm. I felt right? that. Yeah. And look, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a global it's thing. It's ubiquitous. It's ubiquitous across the industry. Mm -hmm. And greed may be a part of it, but honestly, fundamentally, it comes down to accounting. Mm -hmm. Most property managers are not accountants. And unfortunately, the vast majority of them, by the time you move out, they realize they don't have the money. And so they come up with any reason or any excuse to withhold that security deposit. Sure. Because that's every cent or every dollar less that they have to then whip out of their bank account to re refund to you. Sure. And so how do we help PMs? Effectively, we start with accounting. We clean up their books, 
we get them to the point where they're audit proof. Of course, when we hand them back the books and say, hey, you're ready, they say, I don't know how to keep ourselves clean. We don't have the staff, we don't have the knowledge. We're really good at sales, right? But how do we do this? And so ultimately they hire us to keep their books clean. Yeah. Right. So we become the, you know, outsource, you can call it like bookkeeping division or accounting division for a PM company. So that's how you help make their lives a bit easier today. That's how you help them survive. Now let's talk a bit about how you help them thrive. Yeah. If I'm a property management company with ambitions to scale. Yeah. How can you help me grow? Fundamentally, when you when you work with us, you never have to worry about headcount. Hiring, training, retaining staff today is extremely hard. Not only do you have to find people that have property management experience, you also have to fight, find people who have the software experience. These yep. big ERPs, Yardy Voyager, Appfolio, Buildium, Propertyware, these aren't easy software. Wait, you're saying Yardy's not easy to use? Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, anyone who's going to... These things are not easy sure. to learn, right? Yeah. The, the, the learning curve is really steep. It is. And so it's like, if you're a small mom and pop, look, this is not your typical institutionals. And honestly, even institutions have this problem as well. Mm -hmm. Like, you just don't have the expertise, nor the time, nor the resources to, like, train people to the point where they're actually good at what they're doing, of course, because they understand it. There's lots of turnover in the industry. We effectively enable them to say, you know what? I don't want to deal with this. I'm just going to outsource it arguably. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to pay a dollar per unit or however much per unit. Sure. And what that enables them to do is every additional unit they bring on, mm -hmm. they know if I'm bringing a hundred bucks a month in revenue, my accounting, let's say is 15 bucks of that. It's a predictable variable. It's a very cost. predictable variable cost. Exactly. Understood. Versus headcount. It's not predictable, sure. right? Like it's not variable. Once you hit capacity, the next one unit you bring on, guess what? You're now losing money because you have to now hire and train a new person. Sure. It doesn't scale. Now imagine I'm Joe Schmo and I'm just getting my prop co off the ground. I just started. Yeah. Um, how can you help me get into business? We know all the best practices, right? We have a thousand clients across America. We seen from five units up to 5,000 units, right? We've seen all the best practices and it's something where it's like, we can almost hand you the playbook. We can almost be a PM in a box where it's like, don't worry about it. You focus on what you're really good at, which is relationships with property owners. Sure. You bring in those manager contracts, we'll run the back office for you. Tell us about uh, maybe your most recent or some of your most fun adventures outside of work recently. Everyone needs a break. They need mental breaks. Yep. You know, my mental break, I was going to film the first episode of my, my own screenplay. Your own screenplay? Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. TV series or movie? Yeah, right. I could see me like a limited series on like Netflix or something like that. I'm a movie guy. Show me the script. I'd love to take yeah. a look at it. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, yeah well, well, you can go to www.ridiculous.com. Is that is that right? Uh -huh. You you own that URL? Yeah, ridiculous. It. It's grant. It's spelled a little. It's it's missing an O. Great. So like Oculus. It's R I D I C U L U S. Sure. Go there. You can look at their screenplay. And you're starting uh, a bit of a hacker community, almost like Hacker News for uh -huh. PropTech as well. Is that right? Yep. So so we we recently acquired PropTech.News and PropTech.News. Yep. And okay. so effectively, like you know, right now we're seeding it, right? So it's kind of like the early days of Reddit. Sure. Come in, you know, start posting, you know, articles about prop tech, post stuff. Let's, let's, let's discuss. Yeah. Right. Like there's tons of opportunity in prop tech. We're here for CRE tech. I love that idea. Right. Like, yeah, I, my company is not at all in commercial. We're in single family, sure. small multifamily. Right. So it's like, there's so much opportunity in real estate globally. Yeah. And so, you know, one of the angles for us is just fostering this community. Right. On that note, disruptors such as yourself, uh, Taylor, you like to look into the future. Sure. Yeah. As you look into the future, what excites you about single family living, apartment living, prop tech in general? Fundamentally, people need a roof over their head. Of course. Right. And it, unfortunately, there's not enough supply to meet demand. People, the affordability of a home is 
really, it's getting worse and worse and worse. So ultimately, there's gonna be more renters, and we're seeing this across the industry. And look, it's a global problem. Sure. Well, look, Taylor, um, thanks for attending CRE Tech with yeah. me. Thanks for being here thanks tonight for, for, the, for the fireside chat. It's been an yeah. absolute pleasure. We appreciate your time. Folks, if you're a prop co, go check out APM Help. And most importantly, Veritas folks, APM Help folks, LinkedIn folks, and internet folks of all time, proptech.news. Proptech.news. Go on there, write something controversial, ask contribute, a question, contribute, discuss, absolutely. invite people. We want to build a community. We'll build a community, and if you're early enough, we'll make you a moderator. You can own the CRE side, you can own the multifamily side, I you love can it. own the affordable housing side, doesn't matter. I love it. Thanks, Taylor. Hey, cheers.